so we were just talking about how all anyone wants to, everyone's obsessed with your wedding for one that's so sweet like obsessed <laughs> okay it was so beautiful <laughs> thank you and that's all like so many people wanted to know and the thing about it is like when you get to the age where your friends are starting to get married mm-hmm. or like i know people who are older than me that are starting to get married and you like, realize that like the last thing brides will want to talk about mm-hmm. is their wedding yeah it's i think it's because so it consumes your life so we had a long engagement probably like over a year and a half so it consumes even if you're not working on wedding stuff every day it's in the back it's like holding space in the back of your head daily like you think about it every day so it's like after the wedding's over and you finally feel stress-free and then everyone asks questions you're like oh my god I feel like I'm reliving like going through all that our wedding I feel like I tried to keep it low-key but I also felt like especially with our lives being on the internet you kind of feel pressure to be like oh I want the wedding to be great perfect whatever the case may be I wanted a small wedding I actually didn't even want to do a wedding Dylan was the one who was like I want to have all of our friends together because he um, left high school early and played college ball so we've always been kind of just all over the place so it was a great time to get all of our friends and family in one spot and now looking back it was like the best weekend ever and I would never like not want to do it but I will say the stress leading up to a wedding these days, I feel like is just unnecessary. But that, it was special. I'm not even dating, so I'm like nowhere yeah. near like this <laughs> issue. But it actually stresses me out mm-hmm. already. Yeah, it's a lot. And then my sister got married two years before me. So she is like, she does um, party planning, like full service as a job. And so she's really into all that stuff. And she would be like, Rachel, have you done this, this, this? And I'm just like, oh, oh wait, I need to do that. And like, I'm so, <laughs> I was so un bridezilla that it was like kind of weird because I thought I would be I only cared about a few things like I wanted a cute dress and a cute venue but then other than that I was like I don't want to put all the like logistical things together because it was just not fun at that point but I'm glad it was it was a great weekend I would say definitely if I could give like a tip about a wedding I would say book your venue first and get a wedding planner (laughs) it's like my best tip I could give you because other than that I feel like everyone is so different and every venue is different and with the vendors and all that stuff you can't really just like compare your wedding to someone else's and expect it to be the same in the planning process because nowadays the venues and stuff it's so customizable that it's it's hard to compare so yeah the whole thing just seems very stressful yeah it is for more details she has a whole YouTube video on this with everything laid out so go watch that are you over wearing white for the time being? Honestly, I feel I find myself still wearing full white outfits because I am a like a light color. You know how there's some people that love dressing in all black? Yes. And then some people are the tans and white. I'm like the tan and white girl. So it was kind of perfect for you. Yes, I love and now I still find myself buying white outfits and I'm like, I feel like people are probably like, she still wants to be a bride, blah blah. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I just really love the light colored neutral clothing. So So it works out for yeah, you. Yeah, works out perfect. The thing that I love wearing white and I feel like I probably look better in white but i i just self tan i tan too much i know so it you it. naturally tan right i do i tan easily my mom tans really easily so i think that's where i get it no i'm irish my grandmother's maiden name is maureen delaney so it's just red hair yes. so i okay. don't do any of that naturally so self tan is your best friend yeah and i it's know tough with white it is hard now that like falls here and i'm not going to the beach and stuff it's like okay self like last night I put a little self tanner on I'm like here it comes again like self tanners back but it'll never give you a pretty color like the natural sun it's, oh no way. it's never the same it so. is never the same you have such sometimes a if I feel pale I'm like I'm gonna book a beach trip yeah, actually <laughs> so you can get a nice little tan but it fades so quick I feel like you have to work so hard for a tan like um Dylan their first football game um was in Hawaii and so we were in Hawaii for a whole week and I got so tan and I was like oh my gosh I'm so tan I'm gonna come back and it's like summer's over but I have a nice tan it was gone in like three days Oh, and wow. I'm like, you work, I, at least for me, I work so hard for a tan and it just fades away. I'm like, well, there it goes. <laughs> that kind of makes you feel a little bit better knowing that because like my fake tan fades away too. So yes. if I was really tanning, it would also fade. Exactly. It never stays forever. As I wish it did, but wow. you it's also not good for, for your skin. a long time too. Yes. Yeah, so we've been dating. This Christmas will be 10 years. That is so crazy. Married now for not, how long have we even been married? I don't know. We got married May 14th. So like four or five months. So what year did you guys start dating? Like in school? Um, So he was a junior. It was like middle of his junior year. I'm a year older than him. And it was my oh. senior year of high school. That's we started so dating. And then honestly, we just, I, I was in a um, three year relationship before him. I was his first girlfriend ever. Um, And then I got out of that relationship. Dylan had never been in a relationship. And we just always kind of had a thing for each other started to hang out started dating and then 
which is obviously never broke up. Now we're married. Now we're here. But it just he kind of sealed the deal quick. Yeah. And it just like felt I don't even know how to explain it because some people are like, how do you know? How do you know he was the right one? I think it just came so naturally. He comes from a big family. I come from a big family. Like we both are both of our parents get along so well. Our siblings all relate. It's just it's one of those weird situations where I can honestly sit here and say, like, I feel like I just got really lucky because Dylan to me obviously to me I'm married him but he is one of the best guys I know and I know friends that are like find me a guy like Dylan and like my middle sister is single and she's like find me a guy like Dylan I'm like they're hard to find truly like I can't I'm trying I'm like I'm around guys all the time Dylan works around a ton of football players and I'm like I just can't find Dylan is just one of those like rare guys and I feel like in high school when I met him I knew that and then we were dating for um two two years before distance started so he was in North Carolina. I was in um, Athens, Georgia, and we did distance for about four years. And then I moved to Raleigh. He was still playing. He finished his last year of ball, and then we moved to Colorado last year. And then this year, we now we're here in Nashville. So <laughs> three years and three moves. Yeah. How did you guys navigate long distance? Every time someone asks me, this is what I tell them. I say, you both have to have your own thing to be busy. Because I was on the dance team at Georgia, so I my nights were taken up with practice, and then obviously I was in school. I had my own like friend life, um, the team; those are like my girls. So I was busy with that, and then um, college football takes up literally every second of their life. So he wasn't out um, partying, finding girls, like doing that whole thing on the weekends because it was games, and I was taking my weekends to drive up and watch him play, and then would take my Sunday and drive home but we both just had such a busy schedule that I don't think that we ever thought like there was no trust issues because neither one of us had time to do anything else yeah. and then another thing that we always did was even if it was like a month and a half until the next time we would see each other we would always set a date and I feel like that really helps because then you can count down like oh there's only two and a half weeks oh there's only one week instead of being like I don't know the next time I'm gonna see him so that's kind of just like my two tips I would say for distance but honestly I don't wish distance on anyone, but I will say I think that's the reason mine and Dylan's relationship is so strong. I'm a very like independent person with what I do for a living. And then also he is obviously gone all the time at work. And I don't think that it we would be able to maintain both of our careers if we weren't like very independent each on our own. So I think that the distance really did help us and made us stronger as like individuals, but also as a couple, as like weird as it sounds. But no, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What are your moving tips? Because obviously for those who don't know in his career path you move all the time mm -hmm. so you're kind of all over the place I would say I'm like honestly if you guys have any moving tips let me know <laughs> because I would say so from moving from Colorado to Nashville was the first time we hired movers um the first time we went from Raleigh to Colorado my parents are literal angels and helped us. And my sister's husband drove the U-Haul with all of our stuff. We try not to keep a ton of stuff. That's why we're always like, but now I'm like, I love my furniture. So I don't think I would sell it if we had to move. But in Colorado, we kind of sold everything. So we didn't have to move it all here. And we just kind of started fresh. But I would say hire movers. But it's hard because movers are so expensive. And yeah. I never really thought of that until you start putting it all together. Well, especially like cross country. Yes. Yes. And then getting the cars and yeah. just the whole nine yards. But I would honestly like I don't even think that there's a good tip for moving besides not being a pack rat. Like don't hold on to stuff. So then you don't have to pack it up. It's crazy how much stuff like even we were in only in Colorado for a year, how much stuff you accumulate over the year and then when you go to start packing it up it's like why did I think I needed this many of this item or whatever and so I kind of would start getting rid of stuff as we would move and now in the Nashville house because I'm like I don't know the season ends in December but who knows when we'll if we'll stay if we'll leave whatever so every time and it's hard too with like what we do for a living we get a lot of stuff in the mail and all that and it's really fun but I try to be good at like giving to friends um, family members keeping things like minimal and yeah because it's not living a simple order. life yeah, yeah. exactly but I always feel really thankful to get stuff in the mail. So I'm like, oh, I want to try this out. Yeah. And so then, I, then I'm like, okay, wait, Rachel, you don't need 17 face creams, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but also you want to you wanna put everything to good use, but it does just pile up a lot, mm -hmm. especially when you're someone who moves. I feel like, actually, your career – okay, basically what I was going to say is that it 
must be hard to like readjust and make new friends everywhere you go Mm -hmm. but we both are having the exact same career path so I have friends everywhere like some of my closest friends don't live in the same city as me yes so at least you do have like that sense of stability like you do have close friends Mm -hmm. they maybe just don't always live near you but you do you know what I mean yes and it's nice too because it's like okay say I made a really good friend in Colorado I'm thankful enough that one weekend if I have free I'm able to go like visit her or her come visit me on the weekdays because I do make my own schedule not saying it's not hard because like in Colorado I did make some good friends and now I'm like oh I miss them but being in Nashville we've only been here for I don't know half a year now um I've already made really good friends and I'm like I can't imagine leaving especially the city I love living here and we're close to family now which we weren't close to family in Colorado um now we're only like a three and a half hour drive from Dylan's parents and my parents are in Florida so it's about like a seven hour drive um but I will say it's nice because with what we do if I didn't do this career, I don't know how easy it would be to pack up and move time and time again, um, trying to like relocate jobs. If I didn't work from home or something, that would be really hard if I like had to go into an office and each time we moved, I had to like find a new living. Yeah. Um, so that's why I feel like it just worked out really perfectly. And I feel honestly every day I'm like, we're just so blessed and thankful to be able to both do what we love and make it work. Um, and honestly, <laughs> moving, it, it's kind of a fun switch up. I I used to be a homebody growing up, but now I feel like the older I get, I don't become attached to homes. Right now we're just renting our house in Nashville, but I don't become attached to things because I think, it sounds kind of sad when I say it out loud, but I don't think that, like I know that we're going to eventually leave, whether that be in five years, one month, like who knows. So I think I just know that in the back of my head so I don't become absolutely in love with a home and then I get really upset when we leave. I just look at it as like, oh, here's a new beginning for Dylan and I. And Mm -hmm. it's like exciting. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see like new places, meet new friends, do new things. Because I feel like if you don't look at it that way, it can be like a sad, honestly, a sad life. So it's very like character building. Yes. Because you have to become very adaptable. Mm -hmm. The hardest thing for me would be leaving the people. I think that would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Luckily, I am a very, like I was saying earlier, very independent. So I, I'm not someone who needs to like have a friend with me every day, especially with what we do. You know, sometimes it can be lonely. Um, You're by yourself a lot behind the computer. I feel like a lot of people don't see like the lonely side of it because they're just seeing you post on social media. Um, So there's sometimes where I find myself like all right Rachel you need to go hang out with a friend like this week because I'll just be by myself especially now that it's football season Dylan is like so MIA right now so I am by myself a lot we just got a new puppy which is keeping me busy but so cute it's nice because we have both big sides of family so we're really lucky we I have like two built-in best friends my two sisters and so it's like no matter where I go I know I always will have them to like lean back on and my mom and dad we, we both just have really supportive families and I think if we didn't have that it would be hard because I feel like I don't know if it's just me but the older you get it's harder to make friends like true yeah. friendships like I have been um still obviously like all the girls in my wedding were hometown friends or friends that I met in college I have made so many great new friends through what we do for a living that will be lifelong friends too, which I'm so thankful for, but it definitely is harder to find friends the older you get. I like kind of, I was talking to my mom about that the other day and I was like, you don't just find, I don't know, the older I get, I feel like I get a little bit more shy and I'm not a shy person. I can talk your ear off once I get to know you, but the initial like meeting and like meeting up to grab coffee or going out for a drink, it's like a little bit harder for me these days. And I... I don't know why I'm like that. No, everyone's like that, by the way. Everyone okay. feels that way. So we talk all the time on the show about like navigating your 20s. Mm-hmm. And the number one asked question is how to make friends. It's hard. It's very hard. And because, okay, you grow up in school, in sports, mm-hmm. in clubs, in neighborhoods. You have set people around you at all mm-hmm. times that inevitably you end up being friends with. Even in college, you have people, sorority, Again, teams, whatever exactly. it is. Postgrad, it's tough, especially when, which I feel like so many people can relate to this because so many of us are working from home with the pandemic, regardless of if you would have before or mm-hmm. not. So it's definitely difficult. And I, I feel the same way about myself. Like, I'm very outgoing. Mm-hmm. But I almost have, like, I can be, like, a little bit more awkward or a little bit more, like, socially anxious. Yes. <laughs> where I'm not normally like that. But I don't Maybe that's, a pan, like, a pandemic no, thing. No, I think it's, I don't know and honestly, it kind of makes me nervous because I feel like the generation that's growing up in the pandemic, it's like, how social are they actually going to be? Because there was a time where 
I mean, I remember there was two kids that I used to nanny a few years back when they were little and the mom was like, they're not going to school and learning anything, like learning how to be around other kids because the pandemic. And she's like, normally the kid would be right into school, like learning social skills, social cues, all that stuff. And I'm like, honestly, not that that was our issue. We weren't, we weren't babies during the pandemic, but I just feel like the older I get, the more like shy and awkward. Sometimes I'll like have all these plans and I'll start to get anxiety about them. And I never used to be like that. I also grew up like dancing competitively. So I was always on a team. And I think that's where now I struggle because now, and I was on a team in college too. So this is my third year out of school. And so I'm not a part of like anything, especially that we work for ourselves. There's nothing to like be a part of. So it's kind of like, you have to really like dive out there and make friends. That's why it's nice whenever you find like a genuine friendship through what we do yes. because they can relate because it's hard to find like that eight to five corporate worker that you can actually like really relate to. I don't know. I just feel like it's harder the older we get. And our jobs are like very specific. Mm -hmm. So I do think it in a way is easier because at least you can find people who have similar interests. For sure. It's still hard to make friends, but at least you have people that you relate to in a way that isn't just like we do the same thing. It's like we mm -hmm. have a lot of the same interests. Um, but I totally feel that. I it just feels awkward. You have to make an effort. It's almost yes, it's like it's dating, the effort. Honestly. Yes. Like you have to put yourself out there. You have to make the effort. Which I've never had to do. Yeah. Because I like ever. just in high school you know I like I have friends who talk about dating apps and I I always tell them I, I would say Absolutely. if I never met Dylan I don't think I would like put myself out there because I am not like that and they are they're always like Rachel yes you would like you would figure it out and I'm like okay I probably would figure out but I wouldn't like it like no I don't think anyone likes having to go out on a dating app and you know what I mean no one likes it yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it's definitely you very much so lucked out yes I did um uh, but yeah it's just it's a it's a weird age and it's a transition time mm -hmm. and especially going from teams where you just have people again with the same interests and you're just kind of stuck together whether you like it or not you at exactly. least have people and now in new cities especially when you're moving it is difficult but you mm -hmm. have to just put yourself out there exactly which just takes so much time you i know? know and i also remind myself like everyone's in the same boat like everyone yes. is wanting to make a friend or you know like go out to dinner and whatever so i'm like rachel put yourself out there don't be so shy and so i'm i'm getting better but it's hard <laughs> it's hard to find the people that feel like a hometown friend exactly in the sense like a hometown friend being the people that you grew up with or just the friend that you feel so comfortable with you don't mm -hmm. have to do anything with like I like the um times where you can like s both be sitting on your phone in the same room exactly and it not be awkward I remember when I first moved to LA it was like a year in and I was like I don't have a friend like I have friends here and I, I was socially going out and doing things mm -hmm. but I was like I don't have a friend that I could just like call up and they would just come over and we would like watch a movie and not talk or something or like exactly. put something on and those are the friends that are hard to find yes but then I'm kind of like will I ever find that friend that friend type because all of my friends that I would say are like that are kids that I've are friends that I've grown up with since like elementary school. I don't think you can fully recreate it, but I do uh, yeah. think you can find people. I say that, but I don't know because the one friend that I would say I've gained in my 20s that I have that relationship with, we are from the same hometown. We just okay. didn't grow up being friends. So you have that connection. We still have that connection. And yes. so, yeah, I don't think you can ever find it again, but I do think you can find a friend in which you are equally as comfortable with maybe in a different way exactly yeah no I mean I've definitely made new friends girls that do what we do mm -hmm. um that I could hang out with every single day but it, you know it'll just never feel like the hometown friend yes but I think that's just called getting older <laughs> I know it, it does kind of suck <laughs> I know I know I'm I hit 25 in May like, a week after we got married we went to the Maldives for our honeymoon and I turned 25 I remember Dylan and I were in the Maldives and I was like why do I feel not excited about turning 25 yeah. I uh. just turned 25 and at first I would like up I would say from, like I was dreading it for a long time mm -hmm. I was like I'm I'm not 25 and I've always been like younger than most of the people that I was around and I okay, like that's being how I younger am. yeah because something about it feels safe mm -hmm. you know and then I was like oh my god I'm turning 25 and I freaked out but then I I shifted it because my friend you know Peyton Sarton? Yes. Okay, so she 25, she would always tell me that it was her favorite year ever and it was so good. Uh -huh. And so every time I would freak out about being 25, I would just be like, no, Peyton says it's cooler and she loved being 25. I'm not kidding. That's like how I got through You're it. like, I'm going to have the best year, so yeah. I'm not freaking out. I'm like, 25 is cool. Like I'm I know. I feel like there's like this um, stereotype or whatever the right word is around getting older, but I feel like it's like what you make of it. You know, it's exciting. Yes. I mean, I got married when I was 24. Now I'm 25. I'm like 
Dylan and I don't want kids for a few years, but I'm like, okay, kids are coming. Maybe we'll buy our first house when I'm 25. Like, you know, exciting things like that. So it's obviously not like the, oh, you turned 21. Now I get to go legally drink. Not that exciting type of thing, but there are exciting things to look forward to when you get older. It's just, you have to kind of like look a little harder and find them. Yeah, you have to reframe. <laughs> Ironically, I'm like really excited for my 30s. Okay. I just feel like that's the decade that I'll thrive. And then I think even 40s might be better. Okay. But I just think I was born to be in my 30s. Now I feel like everyone's having kids older and that whole nine yards. And I feel like I have heard a lot of people say that the 40s are fun. Yes. I don't want to be in my 40s anytime soon. No, I, I can definitely <laughs> wait, like to be clear. Yes. But everyone that I've talked to who's turned 30 has said that just – it's such a good age because you are wiser, mm-hmm. more mature, obviously, but you're a lot, like more confident, but you okay. don't care about any of the things that like stressed you out so much in your 20s. Exactly. And so I'm looking forward to that time of my life. I'm excited for you. It's going to be good. Well, we're the same age, so we'll be. <laughs> yeah, we'll be hitting 30 together. We'll yeah. be like texting. How, how's your 30s going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you have like a few months on me, so I'm going to need you to like really write some essays. Wait, when's your text. birthday? August 1st. Okay, so I've, yeah, I'll let you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, let me know. You're a couple months at 30. Okay, I want to talk all of your like your favorite products, favorite, like basically okay. do like a master list. Okay. I should have warned you. <laughs> I know I'm like okay so what are my favorite products so right now I actually am struggling with my skin me too which I have never struggled with me too adult acne yes and so I honestly if you had to ask me my favorite skincare right now I would tell you nothing like I have been putting nothing on my skin besides sunscreen in the mornings and maybe like a really light moisturizer because anything is making my skin terrible and I don't even know what to do about it I'm like I'm talking to a dietitian tomorrow so hopefully I can get some like hormonal balance situation Mm -hmm. going on but um let's see some of my favorite products okay so for (laughs) this is so typical I mean everyone's gonna be like you are so obsessed with Hailey Bieber but the road peptide lip treatment it's so good and I just like wish it wasn't but it is <laughs> yeah the salted caramel so good but I was looking through my side table my like nightstand last night and I found from last holiday my Laneige um ginger snap flavor and I have been like wearing it last night and now today and I'm like okay the Laneige is just so good if you've never tried Laneige the lip the mask, li- the lip mask yeah. it's so good and I I wish that it wasn't in a pot I know that they have the tube form but the pot's better which is annoying because yeah. you want to like make sure your hands are clean. So that's why I always put on before bed. But I really love that. What's your favorite like foundation? I don't wear any. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> I like have just never worn it because I just don't think I know how to put on makeup good, which I could probably teach myself. But I actually pause there. I meant to bring this up. That is not true. You did your own makeup for your wedding and it oh, was yeah. so good. I bought one of the like kits that you did or whatever it uh-huh. was. Because it was so good. It was the makeup by Kellyanne, yes. which I'm obsessed with her. Obsessed. And I want her, I was like, I want her to do my wedding makeup. And then I saw when I was kind of like picking all the vendors and stuff for the wedding, I was trying to get everything scheduled. I saw that she stopped doing weddings because she got so busy. Um, but she put out a trial where you can buy it. I think it's like 250 bucks, the best money I've ever spent. It gives you like a whole product list, step-by-step videos. And I just sat there and like literally a whole day. And I sat there and I, I placed an order on Sephora when it came in. I just sat there and did it. And I remember I sent my my sisters a picture of my face and I said, be honest, do I look cute or ugly? <laughs> and they were like, did you just go get your makeup done? And I was like, no, I did it myself. And I'm seeing if I can like do my own wedding makeup. And they were like, Rachel, we didn't know you could wear like put makeup on like that. But now it's so funny because I like practiced it and I just don't go anywhere to put that much makeup on every yeah. day. And so now I kind of like feel like I forgot what to do. But I do love the Giorgio Armani. That's what I use for I'm my wedding. Right yeah, that is like, I mean, I haven't tried many. There was two different ones that I tried. I tried that and I tried a Kosas one, which I feel like is, I love Kosas. The Me brand too. Kosas is good. Um, more like clean beauty and good for like every day to day. But I just use like a Charlotte Tilbury powder all over my face with a Kosas concealer. So that's what I've been wearing. But I do love the Giorgio Armani. I probably need to go get a new one because mine is like shade eight. And I'm sure I'm like a shade like three right yeah. now because <laughs> I was super tan for the wedding. But Love that. I've really been into Kosas um, makeup. Like they sent me a package and I kind of was trying some stuff out. Like their eyebrow tinted gel is really good. I feel like their stuff is just very um, clean and like natural beauty. So 
Love that. I use like a L'Oreal mascara and then a, oh, I love the, um, I think it's Selena Gomez's makeup brand, Ray, Rare. It? Rare. I use her liquid blush. Oh. Started using it and I, I love it. I use it and happy every single, well, I don't wear makeup every day. I'm too lazy for that, but it is so good. Rare so Beauty good. is incredible. I love it. So good. You know what I love? I love the Kosa's, um, like the face oil. I don't know if it's like a foundation or whatever oh, I tried it is. It. It's so good. It's especially good for people. Like I don't wear, like I wear foundation now because I'm like filming, not mm-hmm. normally. Um, it's so good. I got my entire family hooked on it when we oh were God, at the lake house one weekend. It's you would really like it because it's light, minimal. It's okay. just incredible. Um, and then randomly for skincare, one of the things I'm obsessed with right now, Lindsay Carter showed it to me. So giving her credit because she has really blown this product up on the internet. It's probably like sold out, right? Okay, well, sometimes. Okay. But it's the Tower 28 spray. Actually, Hailey oh, Bieber posted it first. I saw. Is that like the red can? Yes. And it is so What is it? A makeup good. setting spray? No, it's a, like a toner spray. Oh. It's incredible. And I had it already in PR. I didn't realize it. So I have a travel one. I have like four and I keep posting about it. And oh my God, I'm going to literally so go find good. it and order it. It is incredible. I need to try it. The other thing, because I was breaking out. And obviously, everyone's skin is different. But mm-hmm. like just what has worked for me, except for right now. But I break out hormonally and there's like See, that's what much. mine is. And so that's why I'm kind of like, I can put a $300 serum on my face and it's not going to do anything because it's like my acne, I think, is coming from like, I just have a hormonal imbalance right now. So that's what I'm trying to figure out like. I think it has to do with like foods I'm eating and whatever, yes, but it's so the whole nine annoying. yards. I'm like, why is being a girl so hard? No, it really is. It's so, it is. <laughs> I started doing apostrophe. So I got like, okay. it's like an online, um, like acne medicine thing. Online, okay. Right. And I got like a night cream and then they gave me a prescription. Okay. And that has helped me a lot. And then that, I started using that and the Tower 28 spray in the same week. This is like a month ago. My skin was better. Okay. And overnight, my skin was like perfect. It was so crazy. Oh my God. I need to try the Tower 28. You really do. I'm excited. I want to try that. And Hailey Bieber. If I can find it. it. No, I think that, I think that they have it. Okay. I know. I feel like whenever Hailey Bieber posts those TikToks of like all the, like her doing her makeup the products are gone in five seconds at, on Sephora. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> it's sold out completely. Yes. yes. Always her stuff. I'm like, everyone just loves her. She just has like a very chic style. You know, it's yes. like timeless. She's classic. Yes. I feel like I'm lately now with, especially with the season changing, I'm more into like clothing than products. I've never been a huge, cause I think it's cause I've never really been into makeup and I'm, I always have been into skincare, but now that nothing's really working for me, I'm kind of like, what can I obsess over? So I've really been into like fall fashion, which I feel like a lot of people have been yes. into it lately because the season's it's changing. It's what I live for every year. It's so good. And I feel like I love summer. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm such a Florida girl live in a bikini. Like that is where I thrive is Florida. But when it comes to summer fashion versus fall, there's nothing to do with summer fashion no you can wear shorts a tank top maybe like a long slip dress and that's it with fall it's like you can literally layer texture color like items it's so it's so much better it is so much better Mm -hmm. i recorded an entire episode talking about this yesterday it is night and day i'm such a fall girl though but in the summer i especially living in texas it's so hot oh yeah and where you can't wear anything yeah you can't wear anything Mm -hmm. i wear a dress in boots or sneakers every single day yeah like that's the only option that i have because even wearing jean shorts it's uncomfortable because you're so hot i know and i also hate jean shorts i hate jean shorts i kind of also hate jeans unless they're like s- <laughs> i like jeans now from abercrombie curve love but i normally Ooh, like i need them. i always hear about the abercrombie so jeans good. i need to try them i am someone who buys every single article i mean you can tell by what i'm wearing article of clothing like four sizes too big and sometimes dylan's like why do you dress like a boy <laughs> I'm like, I just feel more confident and cute in baggy clothes. So I always wear like super, like I'll buy vintage Levi's that are way too big and then I'll like belt them or something like that. I just, I don't I know. the look. I think it, yeah. I'm the same way. It's Everything is oversized. Yeah. I feel like if I'm shoved into something tight, I'm just not comfortable. Unless it's like a little silky mini dress or something where you want to feel like sexy and confident. But lately in my day to day, I'm like, give me the biggest size you have. I need, like, a very, very, very big blazer. 
Mm-hmm. I need even like these pants that I've been wearing lately. I'm sizing up and every I love, but I feel like that happened a few years ago. I think so too. And everyone thought it, I think thought it was like going to go away. And it's not. Going and it's away. not going away. And I, I don't feel like it's they're, going away. They're just getting bigger. Like the parachute yeah. pants. I'm yeah. like, I feel like clothing is just, and there's still ways to like give your body shape. Like you can do a little crop top and do the parachute pants and then maybe an oversized blazer and have like a slip of your stomach showing or maybe do like a lace bodysuit with big oversized pants to like still feel feminine and cute but I don't know I just have always felt more confident in bigger clothes <laughs> I'm the same way where are you shopping right now right now obviously Revolve I feel like they just have everything and I love the two-day shipping so that's so nice um also always love Zara but lately I've been kind of I don't know I feel like Zara I feel like they steal people's ideas, so I try not to support them a ton, but you know how that goes. Um, I love the Frankie shop, pricey, but if you're like into minimal living, you can get like three really good staple pair of pants and then like a good sweater for fall and kind of rotate it out. And that's really nice. I've been into more like timeless chic pieces instead of like quality over quantity. I've been trying to think about when it comes to fall fashion but revolve is probably always aritzia is good too aritzia i feel like i always go back to in the fall for the summer i feel like i forget about aritzia because also like me too where do you even shop for summer clothes like you just wear a swimsuit you know so what's really interesting too is that i feel like every i feel like my style in the fall and winter is very timeless and classic mm-hmm. and if it's loungewear i want to be like cameron diaz in the holiday like yes. i want like the uggs and the jeans and the baggy oversized cardigan like i want yes. that look or it's very timeless which i guess that would be too but you know what i mean like yes. more classic a little bit more elevated but in the summer i feel like i am more trendy but that's just because there's it's hard really to nothing be t- to wear i know it's like what is a timeless piece for summer like a good pair of vintage levi shorts it's like other than that I don't even know but I love doing I feel like with fall and winter you can be comfy like you can wear a really cute sweat set from literally anywhere I feel like you can find in a sweat set that's affordable good quality anywhere these days and then do a cute trench coat over it and it's automatically just cute it's a coffee run airport outfit like whatever it's you can do outerwear all I care about in the fall is outerwear well that's not true I care about everything but my favorite (laughs) thing in the fall is outerwear and then you just like throw on like a scarf and a beanie too mm-hmm. and you look so put together so but you're wearing sweats exactly it's very easy um a few months ago i had the home edit come organize our closet <gasps> tell me all about it How oh my god that? it was the best like not obviously it wasn't sponsored i got it with my own money and it was like the best thing i've ever spent my money on because dylan and i we have a really long it's kind of a narrow but it's a long closet that we share and there's like a his and her side and it's built in so there's sections where you can put your shoes and stuff but i just felt like i wasn't utilizing the space because our we have the cloud bed and so it takes up a huge chunk of our room so we didn't really have a spot for a dresser so all of our clothes are literally in the closet like underwear everything that you would put in a dresser is in the closet too so i called them out and they came and like gave me a quote and it was insane so i did like the edit part on my own i because i don't like i would literally get rid of w- rid of my wedding dress if i had to like i don't hold on to anything i'm not attached to anything really um so i did like the edit part on my own and then they came and organized it they were literally there from 7 30 in the morning till nine at night they did mine wow. and dylan's side they go to the container store they buy everything for you like the whole nine yards i remember when they brought me upstairs look at it, i started to cry i was like this is I the would. best thing but now i'm struggling because i did it over the summer and now that i have all these fall clothes because all of my like trench coats and stuff are in our guest bedroom closet I need to switch everything but I'm like I don't want to mess it up I've been so good at keeping it like really organized and so now I'm like is it almost worth calling them back to do like a little season change or I'm like Rachel come on you can probably do this yourself like just (laughs) use your brain but you don't want to mess up their beautiful work I know know? I mean they the way and I had to like have them show me how to fold the items because there's like little drawers where they fold everything like every single one of my underwear and socks are perfectly folded And I was like, who does this? But now I'm like, okay, I've spent like my hard earned money on this. I'm going to keep up with it. And I told Dylan too, I'm like, you better keep up with your side of the closet. And he has. And it's so funny because you walk in and our closet still looks like they came. And I'm like, this was so smart. You have to keep up with the fear of God in him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's like, ooh, she's going to get mad if I don't. So I'm like, fold it the right way. I like showed him how to fold it. He's like, okay, this is kind of like pointless, but (laughs) (laughs) you can fit much more. I I have this weird thing where like, I don't mind spending a lot of money on something sometimes mm-hmm. because if like a oh, workout class or something, right? Yes. Because 
it's going to make me go and then I'm going to get charged a cancellation fee. Exactly. So when it's things like organizing or certain aspects of life, the only way to get me to really stay on track with it is to make you pay for it. Is to Yes, exactly. Isn't that so funny? I think I was, ta- I forget who I was talking to about this, but it was like, I spend so much for example a workout class you spend so much money on a monthly membership and then it's like you order something online and it's like seven dollars shipping you're like oh i'm not getting it (laughs) i'm like i'm like fifty dollars shirt of the seven dollars shipping i'm not gonna get it it's not worth it it is actually really crazy it's not funny how like people don't want to pay for shipping or like things like that you know there's certain things that people are just like i don't want to pay for but then there's dumb things things that i pay for yes and there's like if it has anything to do with time Mm -hmm. i'm like totally fine like if i need my groceries delivered or if i need something if I'm working like there's certain exactly. things where I'm like that's worth it for time mm-hmm. and I can justify it but then other things there's like dumb stuff and I'm, yeah. like, I'm like Rachel you spend seven dollars on a coffee almost every day but you won't spend any money on shipping <laughs> yeah. what's wrong with you no, but it's classic. I feel like everyone just has their thing what are your go-to shoes right now I always this is so bad because they're year round and they're like not even cute or in style but the Yeezy slides like I throw them on every single day oh I think yeah those are actually great those are whether I'm like that's like a chill shoe but like a sneaker right now um I would say these I don't even know how you pronounce them the Adidas Sambas yeah I think it's a Samba Samba they're cute but I feel like I prefer a chunkier sneaker um I'm gonna give my friend a little little promotion Mm -hmm. Lily and Andy they do 112s and they just came out with a um custom sneaker that is like the perfect white chunky sneaker and I feel like I put those on every day I'm such a sneaker girl I feel like I try to wear other shoes um I love like a square toed boot for fall but that's only I'm not gonna wear that running around doing like my errands I'm gonna throw on a sneaker um but I do love a square toed like chunky boot or I really want to get behind the loafer trend I actually spent way too much money on a pair of Chanel loafers and I still haven't worn them because I'm like I don't even know how to style them so I'm trying to figure out how to like make loafers look cute they're cute I feel like I see them on other people but me I'm like I don't know how they look sometimes when I get like I got a pair of loafers too and I have the same issue but it's weird because I see it on other people I know and I'm like that's so cute but for sometimes when it's like something totally new Mm -hmm. style wise and you just like feel awkward in it exactly like, I feel like a lot of people feel that way in cowboy boots. So, like, I just feel so You always weird. look so cute. You but just it, throw them on. But that's only because I wear them. Like, if anyone, if you were to put them on, and be like, oh, my God, that looks so cute. You like, know if I, mean? I were to have the loafers on, you would never think, oh, she looks weird no. in those. But me, I, like, tried to wear them today, and I'm like, I can't wear these with this yes. outfit. See? But yeah. it's because it's you. If I saw them, I'd be like, that's probably the first thing I would have said. It's like, oh, my God, it's so cute. Yeah. You know? I do not like dark shoes on my feet. Like, if you put black sneakers or, um, like, a black booty on me, I feel weird. I feel like light colored shoes make me look cuter. <laughs> it's just not your thing. I it's feel not weird in black sneakers. I wear sneakers every day and I have all white or just colorful. Yes. And but I do I'll do black booties. I feel like white shoes make you look more athletic. Yeah, that they could do. just possibly be in my head, but I don't know. I've always thought that I I'll never forget one year for Christmas. This was when we were still in high school, I think. Dylan asked for a pair of nike free runs is that what they were called uh-huh. and they were all black like even the sole was black and i remember he put them on once and i was like you can't wear those i was like those make you look so unathletic and i think we were playing like basketball at the park and i was just like you seriously can't wear this she's like seriously i just got them for christmas i'm like no and i remember telling his mom i was like why did you buy those she was like that's what he wanted <laughs> and now i'm like the ick yes i was like ew i feel like the white people listening in all black shoes are probably like (laughs) i just feel like white shoes try it put a dark shoe on one foot and a light shoe on the other and tell me your leg doesn't look better in the white shoe it really does and also it makes everyone look tanner yeah and that's probably why i also like it because i'm always trying to look as tan as possible so i'm like but something maybe that's it something about it which is also weird because cleats are black Mm -hmm. nor a lot of them i guess it depends on the school yeah, that's true. You know. uh, yeah, we had white. And that's yeah. true. I don't know. But there has to be like a correlation with that. But I actually, I agree. I remember for Dance Dogs, at the Georgia dance team, every year we would get a new pair of like Nike team shoes. And I was on, only on the team for two years. But the one year that I left, I remember seeing the sneakers and they were black. And I was like, thank God that wasn't my year. Because <laughs> I was like, I would have not liked that. You left at the right time. I did. I graduated at the perfect time. I graduated during COVID. So I didn't even like have a graduation so it's like I still feel like I didn't even go to college because I didn't even have one too yeah Yeah. it's strange also not too yeah Dylan plays um so Dylan coaches for Vanderbilt and they play Georgia at Georgia in like two weekends and I haven't been back to Athens since COVID and um 
I just, I'm like, I'm wearing all black and I'm taking a photo under the arch because I haven't been back since I graduated. <laughs> yeah, you actually have to. You have to I celebrate. Know. I do. Yeah. Dylan's mom got an Airbnb. We're going to stay all weekend. I'm like, I know I'm going as a Vanderbilt wife, but I also am a Georgia fan. So I'm like, I don't know. I so love Athens. Black. I visited Danny and Brooke when they were there. Oh, I yeah. just love it so, so much. Fun. It's such a good college town, especially like this time of year. I feel like the fall semester and football is so, it's so fun too. Like mm-hmm. I just love it. Okay, well this has been great. I could talk to you like for thank you for having more. me on. Of I enjoyed course. it. Where can they find you? Okay, my my new last name is a nightmare, you guys. It used it's at Rach Ottenreath, and it's A U T E N R I E T H. <laughs> you went from having like a really easy last name, pretty yes. much, to Rachel Racky. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. R I P to Rachel Racky. <laughs> R I P. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for having me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know by giving it a nice thumbs up and subscribe for more.